One of our most asked questions is, how do we list on Vestiaire? How do you? How do you? And it seems like a silly thing to ask because, like, how do you list on eBay? How do you list on me? And not but a silly thing, but... If you've never, thing, done, but, it, if you've um, never um, done it. Yeah. If you've never done it, 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 it can look a bit alien. So, what we've done in the following clips is we have shown you how to list on Vestiaire. Shown you how to <laughs> deal with the questions they ask you, what you need to put, what you don't need to put, how you need to do the shindango i think basically we had quite a few people not only ask us how do you list on rest year but i think there were also quite a few questions at the very beginning of um listing where people would kind of get stumped and kind of just not bother listing and some of these are optional which bethany mentioned so mm -hmm. uh, just small things like that which might actually put you off listing and they're actually just very easy to kind of get to the next stage without without knowing i think as humans and as mainly ebay humans we get used to the ebay listing platform yeah and then even if you're using creature other, habit um platforms you you sip sale they do it for you and all that fun stuff however bestiaire is a different kettle of fish completely so what we're going to do is walk you through it and then we'll pop back at the end and talk about fees and postage and i think that's all we need to cover Sounds about right yeah yeah about right cool so um we're going to go to me because i do all the listing she does austin is the I love how you looked at me like I was gonna, like I was gonna like correct you or something. I, I've said this from day one. Austin's the heavy. The listing god by here. Um, so we'll cut to me. We're gonna put a screenshot on the screen here where Austin would normally be, um, and then we'll join you at the end. In your imagination. Yeah. Right. I've got to get the hang of this. So basically, what I'm gonna do is list an item on my phone, and then it should appear on the screen next to me so then that way you can either follow along and you watch the whole thing and from start to begin to finish how to list one item or you can just skip to the part that you need that applies to you we get a lot of questions asked about um do i need to fill this in um what do i put here because it's used items and they ask a lot of questions that doesn't apply to what you're listing and what you're doing so i'm just going to run through it um on my phone and i'm going to do a sort of what they would refer to as a professional term as a screen grab or a screenshot so you can see exactly what i'm doing so first i find the app on my i find the app on my um mobile so this one on my mobile isn't the uh, app link to my main account this is my buying app so i don't normally keep my selling um apps in my shopping folder um but i shop on this account does that make sense hence why it's next to harvey nichols and marks and spencers um so just go ahead and click on that one so i have a buying account and then we have two professional selling accounts um and then i use this one for browsing for myself and then they don't get confused or anything like that i recommend you do that on most platforms apart from ebay where it's good to get uh feedback likewise and things like that on vestia there isn't a feedback system um so it wouldn't be relevant for that so as you can see on the bottom of the screen you've got your home you've got your favorite so those are all the things you've liked you've got sell an item notifications and then obviously um your account so if you're using a mobile app and this applies to if you're going to be using a mobile app or if you're doing it on a desktop i actually do all my listings on a desktop however i know a lot of people do use the app um, and for the purpose of this video i'm going to show you on the app so I've got my items in my photographing folder that I'm going to use. So I just click on sell at the bottom of the page. Those are some um, drafts um, that I previously done and that's where your drafts will go. So if you start listing an item and um, you want to go back to it later, they will just pop there under sell. So start selling. So uh, for this video, I am going to do a piece of women's wear i have a vivian westwood skirt that's actually already listed but for the purposes of this video i'm going to use it again so I click on women's wear so they do women's wear men's wear girls wear and boys wear they used to do home and that although there are still home articles on the website i i can't work out how you list home so i assume they're not doing it any longer and they're just you can just sell through what was already been listed if that makes sense so i'm going to do women's wear so then you've got the option of bags 
shoes, clothing, accessory and jewellery. Feel free to browse and see which ones apply. So literally jewellery is all your standard jewellery pieces, but also bag charms, phone charms and hair accessories. Whereas I would have thought hair accessories would have been accessories. So it's worth knowing and just have a little browsing, become familiar with the site. Um, in accessories, you've got all your sunglasses, your belts, your watches, uh, purse, uh, purses, wallets and uh, gloves and cases, things like that. And then they keep bags separately and then you list in um, what type of bag that you are listing. I won't talk about bags at the moment. The only difference between bags and clothing and accessories, etc., uh, with both bags and purses you have to add measurements you have to have measurements um, whereas the clothing you don't is optional but we'll get to that so today i'm listing a skirt so we're into clothing and that's all the genres if you will that you can list so i go to skirt right so first off you're hit with brands now this is a question we often get what brands should i list on vestiaire and what brands should i list on ebay well the simple question answer to this question is by rule of thumb, and obviously this won't apply to everything, but by rule of thumb, if it's not on Vestia's list, there's not a demand for it. You can add a brand. You can add a brand, and that's you're obviously more than welcome to do that like you would do on eBay. However, eBay is a much bigger marketplace, and it has a much bigger audience, whereas Vestia is still quite specialist. Um, so my rule of thumb at the moment, and my rule of thumb for anyone who's dipping their toes into the Vestia world, is luxury high-end or high-end independent, and I would just have a little search of what brands they have uh, on their list and if there's already products up of that nature then there's there's eyes on it if that makes sense now i say that because they also have brands on here like mint velvet etc etc they recently put into place uh where they're not allowing the sale of any fast fashion onto vestiaire uh, which you know it was controversial um resale of any clothing is good to keep it you know going through the system however not a fan of fast fashion myself so i wouldn't i i you know i it is what it is anyway so they do have mint velvet now they do have moon velvet and they do have brands like that let's see if they've got toast etc etc vestiaire as a platform is and was made for luxury goods and the buying and selling of luxury goods no i'm not saying the mint velvet and toaster some people isn't luxury goods however if you're asking me if it is categorized as high end high street i would not recommend selling on vestiaire that's just my personal opinion. Plus, with their fee structure, which Austin and I will talk about at the end, um, financially, it doesn't particularly work out for you as a seller anyway. Um, so from that perspective, is you'll see what I say at the end. It doesn't really make sense. So um mine is a vivian westwood skirt so i just type in the brand as you can see now it's coming up with add brand which of course you can do if you uh wish to however um if it is too niche or there aren't any on the site it it generally means to me that people aren't searching the site for it etc so i type in vivi so we've got vivian westwood categories come up here i type in the full things so we get all of them so we've got um Vivian Westwood, the first one, which will be main label. We've got Vivian Westwood Angomania, which is, um, I say this is the brand, but it's just an area of the brand which is more uh, more ready to wear. They do sort of like track suits, etc. within the range. Uh, you've got Red Label, so it's Vivian Westwood, then it's Vivian Westwood Red Label, then it's Anglomania. Red Label is uh, can include um, more the high-end dresses, whereas Vivian Westwood main line is more couture pieces you then they've got the collaboration with Vivian Westwood and Lee which is Lee jeans um and then I won't say that because I'm not allowed to on YouTube um but you can see the last category there um is a section of the company which was produced by Vivian and Malcolm so so I'm going to click on mine is a red label so I'm going to go for red label um next so then you get the uh, the categories that you have to fill in. So first up is information. So we'll just go through it as we go. So subcategory, so the length of the skirt. In this case, mine is a pencil length, so I'm going to go mid-length. Um, but if it is an other, it's not on the list. Say uh, I, for example, um, regularly list the midi. 
I wouldn't necessarily click on any of those. I would click others. But in this case, I'm clicking mid-length. Material, it is 100% wool. But you can see what materials there that they... Um, uh, they have to offer and it's also specified the uh, items primary material so if it's cashmere blend but it's only four percent then put in the other the the you know if it's cotton or wool put in the the main the main material content so in this case it's wool and then okay color pretty self-explanatory the only color they don't have on vestiaire is cream and in that case that case i would use ecru ecru a crew which is posh cream it's more of a beige i think but it's posh cream in this case we're on gray next is uh printed so if it has a pattern to it if the pattern isn't clearly marked here i just put other for example if you have like a check blouse or a check dress um, i wouldn't put it under tartan because technically they're not the same thing like gingham etc so i would put it under other um in this case it's plain um anything uh, anything with a graphic print i always put abstract um it's pretty it's pretty self explanatory in fact they have a gingham would i put checking gingham it's a long conversation um <laughs> uh, but they have a lot of options and normally things you know are floral part of tartan uh, striped or plain so in this case we're doing plain and then obviously the size now i always list in the size in which the item is sized in so vivian westwood is in italian um and in this case it is a size 40 two off the top of my head this is not a actual real listing so i'm going to do it off the top of my head for this instance but please do put the actual sizing in because that's just trouble um there is listed in italian i know burberry for example is listed in the uk sizes and then brands like isabel Morant is in french the best way to work out the best way to work out if um what sizing your item is in is firstly where it's made so if it's made in france made in italy etc it should correspond to where it's made if you're really unsure i would go to a um a wholesale website like uh, netta porter or uh, harrods etc and if you click on the brand or the item you're selling it will automatically come up in the uh sizing in which the country it is and then you can uh, correspond that to your listing um so 42 for this instance also if it's a small medium or large um just uh, select the international um size in there and it will have all the small and large but in this case we're doing italy and we're doing a size 42 okay right so that is that section confirm this step and then we get a tick if I get anything pop up on the screen while you're recording this, I am dreadfully sorry, um, but this is my work phone. Next up is photos. So this is much easier to do on a desktop because it will tell you what it's looking for. Although it tells you here, main photo, uh, let's view all for a minute, brand photo, and it will give you an indication of what they're looking for. So main photo, they want a clear photo, hang in, take a photo of anything you're going to send using a contrasting colour background. I can't accept stock photos, just like eBay, but eBay, you can get away with it on eBay. Um, a main photo will attract buyers, so they're just drawing attention to lighting, all the things we've said previously, um, the contrast in floor colour, etc, etc, etc. Brand label, so I, if it isn't a labelled item, I will just put the label of the product, which you'll see now. Um, and then the more the better, packaging and any flaws. However, on the website, they go much more into depth, so they do front, back label size material composition um, and a picture of it being worn where you can you do not have to include those but i try and do as many as they like because it, they're asking for these photos so that they can uh, put them through the first step of authentication now i don't model my clothes i don't have a model for my clothes so i i don't put in a model picture i'll just put in a another sort of close-up of the the top area or the waistband or something like that so in this instance um we're going to select our photos now um mine is a skirt so let's see what i've got so let's add our photos so mine is a skirt so i'm going to use the front photo a close-up of the hem you can select them all at once a close-up a more close-up of the bottom of the hem a waistband picture i've taken a picture of the button 
um, because it has the orb on it and it's a standout feature. The back of the skirt, the lower back of the skirt, and then I have my label pictures. So I have a close up of the label, I then have a closer close up of the label for the sizing. I then, oh, I reached my limit. Oh, well, let's up those those and see where we get. Additionally, when I use a desktop version, you can add more. So maybe they restrict you on the app, but we're learning together, apparently. Um, but that is everything that you would need. So I've got a back of the, I've got a front of the picture, a front picture. I've got multiple close up of the fabric composition. I've got any um, details like the button. I've got a label picture. And additionally, additionally, I would add in the lining picture and a, a, and the composition but in this case it won't let me because we're on an app apparently the app restricts you to 10 photos so yeah the app restricts you to 10 photos but if we were on the desktop i would add further pictures um i would recommend you do it on a desktop but that's just my personal opinion now i did cut out a second and i started doing my description so i just walk you through that now so basically i just do a basic description and like i was just saying um i do like to add size and then the italian size or the french size depending on the manufacturing country uh the composition of the fabric so whatever the blend is so if it's cashmere wool cotton i add exactly what it says on the ticket the um, wash label uh, the color and I do the color of the lining if it's contrasting or any features so in this case the inner lining has the orb logo pattern so I will mention that it has a side fastening so basically just add in all the things that you would like to know as a consumer so you might like prefer a side fastening for um, just the shape of the, the the shape of the garment or you might like a back fastening sometimes they have exposed zips so in this case they have a logo orb button so i mentioned that it might be a detail that the consumer wants to know about um, and then i mentioned anything that is unusual about the garment in this case we're listed a vivian westwood item so there is always going to be something but this in this case is the asymmetrical hem i mentioned the shape of the garment because in general you know what shape you're looking for or you know what shape suits you or you know what shape you like um in this case i've done a fist and flare pencil skirt sometimes i'll add combinations of shapes instead of the uh, standard you know pencil etc because you know they're not they don't all fit in that box and then anything else you can think of the for this video um i'll just keep it basic as basic as it needs to be if it's dry clean i'll add dry clean only um so people know not to wash it shrink it and try and send it back um and then i add what i deem the condition of the piece i add that into the description so in this case i put excellent used condition um in most cases um i won't in on this occasion because we don't want to be here for like 25 hours is that i would add the seasonal collection i'd add if it was a catwalk show or any defining features like it was photographs on naomi campbell or anything like that anything you think you would like to hear as a consumer especially of a used product because sometimes they have history to them or you know anything like that but that should be fine for now um like i said if you want to copy and paste your ebay description that works too but i know a lot of people don't do ebay descriptions as in their description they just do like buy with confidence or something like that so i would recommend putting a description of the item in especially if it's a higher price item um and then seller it will have all your information there so that will be automatically uploaded um i won't add it now because i don't want to tell you where i live um but that will already be uploaded when you create the account with Vestiaire. And then lastly is condition and price. So read through these in your own time. So we've got never worn with tag. We've got never worn without tag, which is basically eBay new without tags, right? We've got very good condition, so no defects. Or they, they, they do say extremely well maintained, which shows slight defects of uses. I assume in that case they mean like creasing or, you know, like when something has been used good condition uh uh it has if the item has defects they're very like uh what i say lenient so i th i don't think if an item has defects i don't think it's good condition but you know so read through those and work out which one suits you mine's very good condition it is never worn has been worn but it's very very good condition um 
and then they ask you to price the item so in this case they'll show you similar souls items um and they will always show you the cheapest because they want your item to sell they want to collect your fees they want you to sell fast and they want you to um, make them as much money as possible um i can just tell you from looking at these lists 35 pounds for a red label even any of those skirts is astronomical um so i'm gonna put and they do a recommended price like ebay it's exactly the same as ebay when you're trying to list something on ebay say it's like a hush top newer tags and they recommend four pound fifty it's the same and um, they take the lowest sold price and they give you that as a recommendation so in this case i'm doing it in um pounds obviously so you put your price in mine's 275 for this particular item they were above the recommended uh guide price uh, and then it tells you what you would get back after fees um, and then you confirm um, op optional information now this is the kikaruni on the app it comes up like this but when you're listing on a desktop it makes it look like you need to fill it in and this is really important because you don't need to fill it in all the information you've just given and i i will add my set i would add my seller in separately is all the information you need to give to list and have your item authenticated, not authenticated, via the website. The additional optional information is as follows, and it may apply, it may not apply. Vintage. So if your item is at least 15 years old. Uh, vintage is technically 20, but we'll let them off. Um, so is your item 15 years old? Um, in a lot of cases, this does apply when we're selling pre-owned goods. Mine isn't. Proof of origin. When you're on the website, it looks like you have to add this, but you'll see next to proof of origin, it will have optional in brackets. If it has optional in brackets, you do not need to include it. However, if you want to include it and it was a personal uh, a personal item or you're not a reseller, you're just selling personally, um, then you ca if you have a copy of the receipt, um, then you can you can add it there it does say proof of origin this information is mandatory for luxury brands but yet it's in the optional category so you do not have to put that in because not everyone keeps their receipts all my personal things i bought full price i cannot find the receipt for them i wouldn't know where they are measurements you can add their measurements in the app here i would naturally add measurements because designer clothes although they have a standard italian or english size uh, uk size sorry um pieces vary from brand to brand and from piece to piece like if something's extremely oversized then although it's a size eight it's going to be probably fit up to a 16 for example so measurements are always helpful where you feel they're needed if it's a high-end brand anything sort of like over 150 i would recommend it but not necessary origin of the piece people often ask me about this and get caught out with this they want to know where you bought it um, and how your purchase price um you don't need to put this in you just don't need to put it in is it's not publicly displayed if you want to put it in put it in but you don't need to put it in it's not necessary it's not necessarily and then serial number also something you do not need to add the only things i would recommend there over anything is measurements and whether the piece is vintage or not because it shows up on the screen as vintage and that is literally it i cannot click confirm because i haven't done my seller information but it's as easy as that then what it does is it zooms off to vestiaire and it doesn't list automatically so you won't see it list automatically at all um you won't see anything in fact it will just it will just zoom off to Vestiaire and it normally takes about a day, maybe quicker, a couple hours to a day for them to authenticate it in the first step of their authentication. And at that point, you'll get a notification that says your item has now been listed and congratulations. Or it will say we need additional photos. And at that point, you can add additional photos via the app or the desktop. Um, or it will say we couldn't list your item at this time because this is wrong with it. The authentication or whatever and that is basically the basics of it and then there's also steps on managing your account where you can see your uh, solds and sending um it's a prepaid postage um situation so you get the label and you just send it um the buyer chooses the courier so be aware of that we have to travel to bath to do our fedex uh, but i'll pop back with us in now and talk about all the additional things that is just the simple listing of an item on vestiaire 
let's talk about money so fees on vestiaire we get asked a lot about the fees on fees on vestiaire can i just because... stop you right there i'd like to say how great that video was thank you yeah i'd, I want, I'd, I'd want i would just want to throw that out there and considering you didn't have me as like the the rock and the assistant I that i am at this point like, you know, honestly first step, well done. first step is screenshots and explaining listing next is hollywood i'm just saying you know me and brendan fraser we're gonna be chilling anyway so fees right yeah everyone always says it's really expensive to listen best yeah and it is slightly more expensive technically but not technically so we'll get to it so basically <sighs> it's free to list unless yeah just like ebay just like vintage just like depop the only mm. one you have to pay an upfront like on the big ones is etsy um as far as i know and the first yeah you don't have space so it's free to list but obviously there are selling fees just like all the other yeah. um applications too which is quite i guess clever wording because it is technically free to list yeah. until you sell something and then they charge so any items between 80 pounds and thirteen thousand, it is a 15 percent one five one five percent selling charge or fees if you will now i personally don't list anything below 60 because it's not worth it but wh why would that be why would that be interest to people listening bethany it's because 60. anything below 80 pounds there is a set charge of 12 pound fees 12 pounds or 12 percent there's 12 pounds 12 pounds okay there you go cool. 12 pounds under 80 15 percent over 80 so based on the fact you sorry ginger but once again if you're going to sell something maybe at uh, i don't know um because sometimes people can make offers and stuff on your yeah. product if you were to sell something it's say i know you don't but 36 so to speak you're gonna get like 20 quid back or, or mm -hmm. whatever, whatever it might be yeah but things to keep in mind is postage for the seller is free free so the buyer buys the postage with vestia you get a sent label which also means they choose their posted courier based on how fast or how slow they want the product in the same way that uh, people do uh buyers do on vinted yes they, they pick it they choose it they pay for it that end you don't have to deal with it you just get a label to print off and put on the package yeah and you get no choice in it whatsoever cool um so, so it can be awkward depending on the the uh, courier yes it can be ups it can be anything it can literally FedEx. be fedex it can be mm. anything ups is really fast by the way more often than not though i will say we're, we're the only thing which is kind of far away from us as regards kind of postage would be uh, or shipping would be uh, fedex mm. we've had one or two of those since we've done it and everything else is kind of regular so it's not a stress i wouldn't i wouldn't have that you international as well yeah exactly anyway so so that's so you don't have the postage cost you don't have the money doesn't the fees don't come out of your postage so yeah. there we go so that is the seller protection now once the item has once you have shipped you get ranked in um conformability which is basically if your item goes to uh, the authentication center or based on returns so if you you know if ever if it arrives and it's in the description you've said it's in and all this yeah you get yeah. points for conformability you get points for how many items you've sold basically so if you get ranked if you sold the loads first, of the items first amount is five and you know then yeah. there's ten and yeah you, and then, you can go higher up the totem pole so and then speak. shipping so if you <laughs> shipped within two working days then you get like special badge and if you, that's an average you know transaction uh, rate and i will say as well just because once again as much as bethany does a list and i do all the shipping really when, when it comes to shipping the faster you can ship i know this sounds obvious but once again people even on ebay i don't think people do it necessarily all the time with vestia if you can ship like the day of or kind of not day of but day after if you will so if it's been bought today you'd ship tomorrow um you really do get put, get those rankings a lot quicker would you not agree 100%. um and then they give you like a timer almost like vintage they kind of give you a timer so i think it's, is it seven days you got seven working yeah you know no you got seven, seven days, days yeah not working days you got seven days to send the package um and they obviously tell you to send it all every day stuff. send it send it once it has arrived with the customer yep they have 72 hours with said product to tell you if it's okay or not okay most people if there's a problem will obviously tell you straight away pretty much instant yeah um but they do have 72 hours after 72 hours your funds are released and it takes two to five working days to actually appear in your bank account in terms of like money available that's credit. available. So, so what Bethany means by that is after those 72 hours, you'll get an email and a message via your app or, or your if you're using the um, the desktop, they will, a notification will come and say it's payday. So for example, if today were payday, being Wednesday, with us for example, we get Friday. it. I think we get it. Um, what day is it today? Sorry, 
Wednesday. Wednesday. If we got that, no, we'd, we'd actually, we, it, would, it would go in today. You'd, mm -hmm. see, you'd see it active in your account, so to speak. It's not available funds, but it's there from Vestia, the payment yeah. amount. And then you would get it cleared. Technically, Bethany's right by Friday. But we what we found out is kind of uh, Thursday night, anytime after nine. So tomorrow night, anytime after about nine, I guess when they close a business for them, it's, it's in the account available. So it's it, usually about two days for us personally, but it can be taken, as Bethany said, up to five. It's very similar to vintage, just a little bit longer. Yeah. But very similar to the how and vintage you don't have to release operates. It, you know, like vintage. No, 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 no. Know? It's all automatic. It's done for you. Um, so people have, um, we've had comments that it takes ages to get your money. It takes no longer than vintage, but it does it takes longer than platforms like ebay and uh depop for example and like facebook marketplace and all those um so that is something to bear in mind um like i said previously when i was going through the thing i would recommend it for high-end high-priced because of the fees yeah. uh items and that's why i said i wouldn't recommend this in mint velvet or anything like that because of the fee structure um and because of that there isn't a lot of those brands I, listed i was just gonna say it actually it actually deters you from send, send those brands i think they've done it for that reason to basically keep it higher end because if anything is going to sell for 80 pounds plus especially pre-owned to be quite frank i mean as a reseller across the board no matter if you kind of sell bread and butter you sell kind of even toys and games but if you're looking to sell anything anything you have above 80 pounds irrelevant of kind of what you've got in it the fact of the matter is that's a higher end item to most mm -hmm. people so based on that they are trying to keep a high end and that's how they, i think they keep a, a very easy it's an easy way for them to keep a luxury marketplace without actually saying you no thank you you know Mm -hmm. I personally love Vestia. I recommend it to anyone who may ask. Um, I also recommend to use it as a tool. So I had a lady ask me very literally today, should I list this item on eBay or should I list it on Vestia? Both. You should always just cross list, cross list anything. That's to, you're doubling your chances of getting that item sold. And if it sells on Vestia, you delete it off eBay. It's, I mean, it's a second exactly as well. J just to go on the, 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 that side of it as well. Like uh, sometimes if something does sell on eBay, for example, over Vestia, it literally, you go into your account, you pick the item, you say remove item from sale, and that's it. It takes seconds. So it's not like, oh, is it a huge rigmarole to kind of go through that kind of take it back off process? Not at all. It's seconds. And very quickly to talk about the authentication system, because I know that's also another big thing. The first stage, and we talked about this before in podcasts, which you can find on iTunes, Spotify, any Amazon, any of them, is the first step of authentication is basically a computer style situation. So you like upload your pictures, as they say, and they use them as reference and, and you know, look at look at them. Um, however, I've said it before and I'll say it again, there are a huge amount of fakes on Vestia, and that's because they've slipped through this first um, initial, like, computer uh, yeah, authentication yeah. and they will have to go to um vestia's authentication in person center which as far as our experience has been is very good 100 it's I'd fast say. it's efficient and it's good it's co just correct right um i'm not saying they won't make mistakes and i'm not saying that anyone ev like everyone but makes mistakes you can um, base on our opinion and what we've dealt with especially computers however if your item if you for example we've had people before say they won't accept the item as authentic because it's missing the inside wash tag unfortunately that is just the rules and regulations yeah. of best year and that they if they can't authenticate it without that watch tag then you just won't be able to list it there's no way around it there's no way to get through it that's that we, we mentioned it before like you said we've had that with a, a, a someone who's asked us that question and i said the reality is you can't list it on there um you know it's authentic we know it's authentic but if it's missing some of the pieces that it would need to, to be authenticated by them and that's how they do it i'm afraid you have to move on and start elsewhere yes that happens very rarely though to clarify but if anyone has any in-depth questions about their authentication systems then leave it down below if you got any questions questions about Vestia whatsoever then you can leave it down below um I think I've covered everything you were just saying obviously about the the authentication system as regards to computer and just so everyone knows when it goes to actually an actual uh, the second uh, part of authentication when it goes to a human being if you will is that well that's what we were just talking about correct yeah, just a bit. Yeah, but I'm saying, uh, I, I, I'm asking, from, from my point of view, I, I just, no, no, I'm just saying, when, I, when, when we were just talking about it, I said, uh, from my point of view, I think they've been, they've been 100%. Yeah, that's what yeah, I said. Yeah, you said that. Yeah. I, I'm checking your ingredients. because I once, think you yeah. were talking to yourself in your head, Austin. Possibly. It happens. <laughs> it's okay. This, this is about as technical video as we're going to get. We'll be back to, like, 
unusual craziness next video yep um but i wanted to make sure i would i tried to be as clear as possible so i kept the jokes locked inside my soul um i don't know if you could tell I, a few slipped out a few little slipped out. um you're but, a funny lady for sure i know if anyone's got any questions at all about this then you can drop comments down below down there down there um and we'll, we'll answer them all we answer them all we'll ask and answer them all i do sometimes i answer um but i'll answer them all so if you have any more in-depth questions what i was saying is have i missed anything else uh, we don't authentication we don't shipping we don't fees we don't actually list in a product we don't what you should list on vest yeah anything else for you sir um no i don't think there is i actually think that's pretty much everything covered my uh, my, my only kind of closing statement would be honestly we we didn't use it for many years ha having sold luxury items in many different ways from many different platforms at, as well as a store and I've got to say, since we used it, what would you get our 10? 9.75. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. You know? The only thing is, um, the only thing I would, like, drop marks for is, um, is the actual navigation of the website. I don't personally like. I, I, I would say clunky. I would use the word clunky. It's and, a bit, and... um sluggish yeah that, and that's exactly it but apart from that i think if you can get past that and once again like you know from what i know from with you dealing with it it is kind of once you get into it and you kind of you kind of do multiples and you've done it once twice three times four times you kind of know it's like that so yeah. you just kind of you get used to it if you yeah. will you know anyway so if you have any have any if you have any questions you have any questions <laughs> leave them down below um otherwise we shall see you tomorrow for probably some sourcing right we got, we got to get, we got, we got we to get, get out of this place, haven't we? Out of this technical funk. No one wants to hear us with the good stuff, do they? No one wants to hear the good stuff. They just want to hear, they just want to see us shopping. Let's go shopping. shopping.